Warning, the following podcast contains profanity. And honestly, at this point, you should kind of be suspicious of shows about current events that don't. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Blue Apron, a better way to cook. And by our Mike Pence in five words or less contest. Today's winner is at NerdNostic, who bent the rules a little and got Trump and Pence in there together. At NerdNostic had... Q-tip before and after. Well played at Nerdnostic. And the game continues. Keep tweeting us your best five words or less about Mike Pence using the hashtag Pence Scathe, and you could be the next winner. And now, Scathe Nathan's. Hi, this is Eric, Kathy's son. And as an avid consumer of skeptical and atheist podcasts, I've learned two very important life lessons. First, we did in fact evolve from filthy monkey men. Second, don't take glory hole advice from that noisy evil giraffe in a thunderstorm, with or without a K. Thursday. It's May 32nd. And I've never met a Ramadanian I didn't like. I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from New York, New York, Secret Lair, Pennsylvania, this is the Scathing Atheist. On this week's episode, Ken Ham sucks dino dick. Tucker Carlson doesn't matter. And Muslims around the world will keep pretending they enjoy this holiday. First, the diatribe. We won't believe it. I had the craziest dream the other night, they said, and then proceeded to bore the shit out of you for 15 minutes. You know how interesting my thoughts usually are? Well, well, wait until you hear them half remembered and unburdened by the filtration of logic. It's the least promising opening to a conversation since would you like to have someone here with you before we go over the results? And if they want to make it doubly unpleasant for their listener, they'll wrap it up by asking what you think it all means. What do you think it means? That you dreamt about it or that you thought I'd give a fuck? I mean, healthy reticular formation activity. That you were asleep. What the fuck kind of cerebral light do you expect me to shed on the unicorn in a fucking supermarket? But of course, most frustrating thing about this whole ordeal is that I will freely admit at one time... I was one of those ridiculous jackasses desperately searching for the secret decoder ring for my dreams. God, I wish I could slap the stupid out of my younger self. Now, eventually it occurred to me that the collective mind was a fucking idiot if its best idea for how to communicate with me was through some ambiguous, unconscious, nebulous rebus puzzle. But it took an embarrassingly long time. In fact, somehow there were steps in that process. I first rejected those books that offered up these one-to-one -one correlations, right? The dream dictionaries where, you, you know, you'd look up whatever noun or verb you were dreaming about and it would tell you what that was a symbol of. But I guess the, the idea that a white cat meant the same thing in my dream as everyone else's dream seems sillier than the idea that a white cat in my dream meant anything at all. So I rejected those ones early. Of course, upon reflection, the real reason I rejected them first is because they offered specificity, right? It's like that with all the hippie Wicca neo-pagan pseudoscience bullshit. Anything that offers up concrete predictions or lend itself to direct testing had to get rejected pretty fucking quick. It's it's like all other means of knowing that aren't science in that way. But my justification at the time for why my dreams kept failing to impart great wisdom on me was that I was trying to dissect them with too blunt a tool. So I went back to the bullshit store for better bullshit books and I dug up all the Jungian nonsense and I, I kept these elaborate dream journals, which were at least somewhat redacted in case my wife decided to read them. And whenever I woke up with a particularly vivid memory or whatever, I'd obsess over it all day like a half-remembered appointment. It's part of my life that I'd basically forgotten about until a couple of days ago when I woke up remembering a, a chunk of my dream where I let a black cat into my house. Now, 
I know, I just told you about my dream, so according to my own standards, this is now a boring diatribe, and according to Eli's, I have to fuck you. But the point is, that's exactly the kind of thing that would have had me pouring over the dream journal 20 years ago. You know, it's just chock full of paper-thin, uninspired horror movie director symbolism, isn't it? Black cat in the house. I, I, I told my wife about it the, in the morning, and we laughed about how meaningful that would have been to young stupid me. And then I started getting pissed off at young stupid me, as I so often do. I mean, there I was, prime learning age shit, and what I chose to learn was less than nothing. The, the, the time would have been better spent playing video games and keeping abreast with cultural references I would need in my 40s. Instead, I obsessed over 18 kinds of stupid. And the most fucked up thing is that in this case, I even had an interesting question to start with, right? Why did I dream about letting a black cat into my house is a really interesting question if you tackle it from a scientific perspective. I mean, the cat in the house don't factor into it much, but the why did I dream part of the question is a boundless well of fascinating. There are a ton of intriguing unanswered questions around sleep science. You know, and we're not even 100% sure why we sleep. Why do we dream? Why do we yawn? Why do some people walk in their sleep? All kinds of awesome science that the very same question could have led me to. But instead, I pissed away my time trying to reach the end of a mystical jogging track. See, we have a problem in the atheist movement, and, and I say we to make you complicit in my failing, where we tend to think of this stuff as the purview of the stupid. You know, I, I'm as guilty as anyone of dismissing claims of mysticism and religious experiences, the rantings of idiots, even though I myself was once one of those idiots. If, if podcasting had existed when I was 25, I'd still be apologizing for the show I did on how to teach yoga to your fish. I mean, we all know plenty of smart people who are devoutly religious or horribly mired in woo, right? I, and, and if you don't, I mean, many of the most admired intellects in our movement spent plenty of their cognizant adult years buried under that bullshit. And let's be honest, what would it say about us if we were locked in a decades-long battle against a bunch of idiots and hadn't made much progress. And yet, from where we stand now, it seems like you'd have to be a Velcro-only level idiot to fall for the claims of homeopathy or Christianity or dream interpretation, even for those of us who once fell for it. And I'll admit that it is a challenge for me to keep in mind that the idiot I'm railing against as often as not is me. And the fact that it's so hard is the reason it's so important. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are a couple of four podcast podcasters, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to remind me which one of the shows we're recording right now? Uh, the angry one? That's it. Uh, I think they're all the angry one for no. We need to limit yeah, it Yeah, true, down. true. Now, speaking of which... First angry one? Blood pressure hasn't sufficiently subsided to move from the diatribe to the lead story just yet, so we're going to pause for a quick word from this week's sponsor, Blue Apron. Ooh, how about les pauvres n'ont pas de sentiment? Well, they won't let you in if your pleats aren't properly ironed, but they make a great soy-based vegan faux snail. Yeah, 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 that sounds delicious. I don't know. I, what, what, what do they have in terms of, like, uh, grease? A trap under the sink? You can I, can, can, can we just go a to a normal place? By normal, do you mean a place that has crayons at the hostess stand? Yes. That sounds delicious, too. No. Okay. How about Five Gaias over on 51st Street? It, it, is that the place where they asked if I wanted cruelty-free soda? It is. It is. That it is. sounds delicious. No. What about that diner around the corner? I mean, it's right there. That stuff looks like food most of the time. Uh, are there going to be poor people there again? Cause guys, were... guys, come on. I'm starving. We've been arguing about this for like 40 minutes. In less time than that, I could have made us a home-cooked, delicious meal from Blue Apron. But will those meals make polar bears cry? Um, Not at all. Seems oh. irrelevant. Blue Apron has established partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. As a result... Seafood is sourced sustainably under standards developed in partnership with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. Beef, chicken, and pork come from responsibly raised animals. And produce is sourced from farms that practice regenerative farming. Okay, but uh, assuming I care only about taste. Uh, upcoming meals include warm smoked trout and asparagus salad with fingerling potatoes and garlic croutons. Spiced zucchini enchiladas with creamy lime and tomato rice. Mm. And peach honey glazed chicken with mashed sweet potatoes, collard greens, and Thai basil. Sounds amazing, peach right? Peach 
honey glazed, you say? I do say. Ooh, that sounds expensive and or inconvenient. Not at all, Eli. Incorrect. Uh -huh. Blue Apron costs less than $10 per person per meal. Way less than you'd spend going to a restaurant. Plus, all the fresh, pre-portioned ingredients are delivered straight to your door. So no need to worry about traffic or parking or any of that stuff. Plus, if you want to check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping, all you got to do is go to blueapron.com slash scathing. You guys will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash scathing. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. So what do you think, Eli? Delicious home-cooked meal tonight? Okay. Waiter probably would have spent the whole time telling us about Blue Apron anyway. They always do. It's weird, right? <laughs> and now, back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, last Friday marked the start of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, a time set aside to mark the joys and good fortunes of not being a Muslim. Every day is enjoy not being a Muslim day. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Yay! Isn't it? Yeah. Now, this anti-holiday is recognized by fasting every day from sunup to sunset. A fast that includes water, by the way, praying even more than the already draconian prayer schedule demands, and reading the shittiest book that exists, or even better, listening to kids do so out loud for a month. <laughs> because otherwise, Baron Harkonnen's going to get mad? <laughs> <laughs> Moses month. Yeah. Now, I, I just I don't just bring this up to elucidate a lot of the why would a Muslim be willing to blow themselves up questions that we've been asking ourselves of late. I mean, Salman Abidi did get out of a lot of malnourished Quranic recitations, but like it's, a good reason. yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's also newsworthy because of what won't be happening this year. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, in a move clearly designed as nothing but a go fuck yourself and your heathen faith to Muslims, has elected to break with almost two decades of tradition and not host an Eid al Fitr reception at the State Department. All right. Well, as long as they don't cancel the atheist event during which nothing happens and everyone just does their goddamn job, <laughs> I think we should be fine. Every day is atheist event where nobody does anything and everyone just does their goddamn job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they didn't do the other holidays, I'd be okay with it. Now, the, the tradition of America's top diplomats hosting an event for Ramadan goes back 18 years, and normally it features the Secretary of State offering up a few words on the meaning of Ramadan. Now, as relieved as I am anytime I hear that a Trump administration official has declined to offer up their thoughts on Muslim traditions, Probably good. it's hard to see what the political calculation is when your administration is mired in accusations of Islamophobia. Also, admissions thereof. Yeah. Uh, Auschwitz wasn't the way we were hoping to discourage circumcision. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like yes right. <laughs> Jesus. The White House also traditionally hosts a Ramadan-related event of some sort, and as of the time of this recording, the Trump administration is declining comment on whether or not they're going to continue with that tradition. Uh, I'm, I'm going to fly around on a magic carpet with Ivanka, singing a whole new world. <laughs> no, no, hard pass. Okay, what if, we, what if we lure them all here as some sort of trap with the glue on the floor? No, <laughs> no, no, either, no. <laughs> No, well, but, you know, as tempting as it is to read this as a dismissal of Muslims, it's worth remembering that clearly nobody there knew that they were supposed to do something for Easter until the night before either. So, you know. Well, it's my favorite game. Hateful or incompetent. A fun future game show people will play about this administration. <laughs> this historical epic. <laughs> and in Black Lives Matter news tonight. Newly appointed Secretary of Education and walking please spit in my food sign, Betsy DeVose, is all about, we've been pronouncing it differently every show, so I'm just going to throw some wild ones out there, is all about choice when it comes to education, religious or secular education, private or public schools, miscegenated or otherwise. Oh, Jesus Christ. We should just give money to anyone, said the fiscal conservative. How the fuck did we get here? Ooh, ooh, we thought a lady could be president in a country that spent $49 million on Entourage 2. <laughs> That's how we got here. Don't blame this on Vinny Chase and his fascinating crew. You don't know. <laughs> I will never forgive you for knowing those names. <laughs> it's a good show. It's only one. And movie. And there was not a two yet. 
So while answering questions before a House Appropriations Committee about her voucher program, or as we like to call it here on The Scathing Atheist, trading education for nonsense program, Democratic Representative Catherine (laughs) Clark brought up Lighthouse Christian Academy, which our listeners might remember for receiving $665,000 in school vouchers while forbidding students from being gay or having gay parents. Yeah. (laughs) So how does that work? Like... Lesbian moms just show up at school. Yeah, we stopped being gay. Both loving the cock now. We good? <laughs> good? Here's your corporate welfare check, assholes. Oh, yeah? What'd you bring to the potluck? Barbecue? Yeah, nice try. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Barbecue's a lesbian food, right? Like, I was trying I to like, <laughs> like, pussy is the joke, but what do they, you want to convey? <laughs> Quinoa? Anyway, Representative Clark, in what would be a lob (laughs) for any non-crazy person, asked if such discriminatory schools would be eligible for benefits under a voucher program, to which Devos responded, quote, for states who have programs that allow for parents to make choices, they set up rules around that, end quote. Uh, So one, no, no, they don't. Nope. Uh, Two, good general rule. If someone's ever talking about a choice a state should be allowed to make where there's a Waffle House in that state, it's a bad choice. <laughs> always, always a bad choice. Now, and, and by the way, if you, if you think that hyperbolic, I want to point out that if you only counted the non-Waffle House states, Hillary wins the Electoral College 158 to 63. But here's what happened in that exchange. What about thing X, which exists and is happening and I am presently citing? Oh, I'm sure that never happened. Nah. Pretty sure yeah. they have rules about that, don't they? No? Rules they have? Okay. <laughs> so in what I assume was a desperate attempt for her to get one right, the Secretary of Education was then asked if schools could also discriminate against African American students while receiving federal fundings. And this is how Devos responded. Quote The bottom line is Too slow. Too slow. <laughs> we were looking for no. It's a one syllable answer. We have a one, <laughs> one word syllable answer. answer and to the Schmenderlinks want to steal. The <laughs> code <laughs> continues. We believe that parents are the best equipped to make choices for their children. Schooling and education decisions. And too many children today are trapped in schools that don't work for them. I assume, this is me now, I assume she means schools that have blacks in them, right? That's what that means? All right, Uh, continuing. We have to do something different. States and local communities are best equipped to make these decisions, end quote. Not adding, except for the time a bunch of states decided they didn't want to be part of America anymore, that was bad, and the election, also bad. (laughs) But other than that, they nail it. Again, what she's saying is, I believe that the the, the the lady leaning against the Dr. K machine at Walmart waiting for a motorized cart to open up so she could re-up her supply of pre-buttered toaster pancakes is better suited to make these decisions than the collective intellectual heft of America's top educational professionals. I mean, whoever heard of a racist parent, am I right? I mean, they're not going to... Yeah. And while we're on the subject of vouchers, shouldn't atheists be getting government checks for all the untaxed magical buildings we're not using? I think don't we so. Get? Oh, yeah. And okay. look, there's only three of us when you ask really. So, 700 trillion divided by <laughs> me, Matt Dillahunty, and Noah is, yeah, no, it's good. It's a good, it's a good <laughs> idea. I like it. I guess what we can learn from this story is that there are two states that matter. When you leave things to us, everyone gets roads, schools, and healthcare. And when we leave things to the other states, you get monster trucks. That's what I really take away. <laughs> Uh, you learn weird things from Eli's headlines. <laughs> it's a weird lesson. <laughs> and in Papal Who Live in Glass Houses news tonight, Pope Fran's sister wives garnered some positive international press last week by being visibly disquieted by the immediate proximity of Donald Trump, proving beyond any reasonable doubt that even a Jamaican octopus couldn't squeeze its way under the bar this asshole gets measured by. I have a tentacles, man. <laughs> <laughs> Jamaican octopus. That is my Jamaican octopus. That did not sound at all like an octopus. Oh, Bob, he's come calamari. He's Bob calamari. Oh, nice. Well, well done. Bob sir. calamari. I don't. Calamari. I don't get that joke, but the I, octopus <laughs> is going to stay in okay. the whole universe. So let's go back to the Pope here for a second. <laughs> Who the Did fuck we? wouldn't look nauseated with Donald Trump at their right hand? Right. Like what, what, what? Ooh, he touched a person, even though that person was deformed. What a pope! <laughs> yeah. Okay, to be fair, he could have just been nervous. He's fragile, wearing a dress. He knows the score. 
<laughs> all right. So first of all, if you saw the pictures online of the Pope looking like a dejected preteen being drugged to a bingo hall. Yeah. He, he, you could almost see his thought bubbles. It's like, yeah, this is why I'm against fucking with stem cells. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so, gross. Well, but, but I want to point out that one could just as easily have cherry picked a couple of photos where the Pope seems super stoked to be there. Yes, he wore a grumpy, dour face a few times, but it's not even clear that that was intentional. Could have been gas. So it's a long ways from praiseworthy. What is praiseworthy, though, and also dejected preteen like is the fact that the Pope presented Trump with some stuff that he wrote that he'd like Trump to read specifically his encyclical on climate change no poetry but uh, TLDR stop destroying the earth or we'll run out of kids to fuck I don't like it when they come sweaty I like it when they're <laughs> not the sweaty you gotta you gotta use a koozie okay you know, the no beer we're koozie? moving Ooh, move. oh, it keeps the Racist. temperature you don't it doesn't sweat that well, is their good, word might be a good sponsor there and in halal kinda news tonight Devout Muslim Muhammad Bazi is suing Little Caesar's Pizza this week after he says he was served and accidentally ate pepperoni made with pork. I, I, you know, I'd say as opposed to pepperoni made of what? Yeah. But you'd probably have some weird vegan answer that'd make me want to stop eating, so I'll refrain. <laughs> I'm just saying hemp pepperoni, delicious. Is it? Nope. Literally nothing. Nothing <laughs> vegans make. Did you run a compost pile through a sausage maker? I did. I did. <laughs> Would you like some? Nope. Yeah. So according to the complaint, Bozzi ordered halal pizza twice from the Dearborn, Michigan shop. The boxes were labeled halal, but the pies were topped with regular pepperoni. Because, hey, when you combine the already famous multiculturalism of Michigan with the world-traveling reputation of Little Caesars, you expect respect <laughs> for commands from a schizophrenic pedophile. Am I right? <laughs> Who's with me? <laughs> Center of the universe. All right, but what the fuck is halal pepperoni? Right? What are they talking about? Like, you open your door, the delivery guy's bleeding out a lamb on your stoop that just sliced his neck. <laughs> See? Holy. We had complaints. We fixed it. <laughs> this is for real. Now, I want to admit, as someone with self-imposed dietary restrictions, I am sympathetic. Uh, last week, I watched you order cheese-flavored water. Like I said, sympathetic. Happened. It's why I'm stern with my baristas. I make sure to snap my fingers in their face if I feel their attention is wandering. Uh, I use first names quite a bit. But the amount Mr. Bozzi is suing for makes even me a little suspicious. Uh, how much is he suing for? That would be $100 million. Each. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Because nothing heals the threat of eternal hellfire like a private jet. Am I right? <laughs> really takes this thing up. Well, I, I'm torn, though, because I feel like anyone who had to eat Little Caesars is entitled to that. <laughs> sure, but then so is everyone that's been stoned in my hometown. I'm just saying. Mm, that's, yeah. Meanwhile, the LC has issued a statement saying they believe the claim is without merit, and our own legal counsel, P. Andrew Torres, has added, quote, Eli, this is my home phone. You can't call me about stuff like this at 3 a.m. I'll speak to you in the morning. No, I won't say I love you, too. Because I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. End quote. Either way. <laughs> hurtful. I wasn't sure about sharing that, being vulnerable like that on the air, but I like to share my pain. Either way, if this goes through, you're damn right I'm going to start a church of veganism and start being a lot less specific at Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, $10 million, I'll become a fucking Muslim. Plus, you already have plenty of, you know, crotch skin problems. You got a head start. <laughs> And in good news tonight, the Freedom From Religion Foundation recently reminded an elementary school in Tennessee about the very top part of the Bill of Rights. Uh, and, to um, whom it may concern. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're close. Dear and, uh, King James. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how it means that public schools are not allowed to have teacher-led Bible clubs. And in a shockingly reasonable response, the school decided to stop breaking the law. Huh. In related news, Stephen Baldwin tried to stop being a weird squinty fuck and open his <laughs> eyes long enough to make another terrible movie. And we are rooting hard for him. Used to be a usual suspect. You guys think if he sneezed, he'd die? Yes. <laughs> I do. Thought that before. <laughs> so, story gets even better. Stephen Baldwin and, um, sneezed and died. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not that great but in response to the news about this school 
uh, anti-Semitic bad guy from every prep school movie, Tucker Carlson, got all angry, which was fun. Uh, quick refresher, he's the guy who came in last place during the fall 2006 season of Dancing with the Stars. That was the pinnacle of his career. Well, now he has a show on Fox News and decided to vent his frustration about atheists by doing an interview with Dan Barker of the FFRF, during which Carlson did about exactly as well as he did on The Dancing Show. <laughs> I want Dan Barker to just show up at the interview with a boombox, set to the desk. <laughs> what you got, Tucker? <laughs> yeah. Real tough. Take on the guy who tried to shoot a flare gun to win a conversation with the editor of Teen Vogue. <laughs> hope, made, hope Dan made it out okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll try to boil down the interview to its essence. Uh, basically, Carlson says, so why did you personally, Dan Barker, show up at an elementary school with an atheist mob and start slapping Bibles out of the hands of innocent six-year-olds and then brand them the mark of the beast on their hand with a red-hot poker? And uh, Dan Barker says, yeah, I can see how you got confused because what I'm about to describe is very similar, but we actually just sent a letter and uh, actually, that's it. We sent a piece of paper to the school. Uh, that's all we did. How are you still on TV? Bill O'Reilly raped people. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Uh, social change is scary and appealing to angry racists is always a good investment. I'm nailing it today. <laughs> no, I two. think your, yours was way more accurate. <laughs> now, uh, unfortunately, this did not destroy all of Christianity like we planned. But wait, 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 wait. Nice Let me big refresh. Big step in the right direction. Refreshing. <laughs> It's Did still it? there. Go ahead. No, it's uh, still there. Fuck. Close. But uh, I think it's safe to say that this uh, this town here won't be able to teach the Bible to their kids anymore. Unless, of course, they manage to find some sort of private venue that would house the worship. But, you know, good luck finding that in Tennessee. <laughs> I don't see it happening. And speaking of Tennessee, we need a minute to celebrate the fact that we're not there. So we're going to pause for a quick break and hand things over to my lovely wife, Lucinda. A man wrote the Bible. A whore is what she wants. If it's a legitimate rape. It means you're a slut, right? Hey, cooking can be fun. Hey, I'm proud of a man. This week in misogyny. You know, some weeks this job is a real bummer. I report serious tragedy over and over. And more often than not, the pattern that emerges is that progress is slow and that it takes a world of suffering for things to get better. And this is not one of those weeks. Because this week I got a rare treat, misogyny that was, by the standards of what I deal with, pretty much harmless and also hilariously stupid. So this comes to us from pro surfer and patron saint of Deadbeat Dads, Laird Hamilton, who explained to TMZ last week that the number one cause of shark attacks was, oh, I hope I pause long enough for you to figure it out on your own, women on their period. I shit you not, listen to this quote. The most common reason to be bitten is a woman on her period, which people don't, you know, they don't even think about that. Uh, uh, obviously, if a woman has her period, then there's a certain amount of blood in the water. End quote. Okay, first of all, Jesus, I love this so much. If you get a chance to watch the clip, it's so heartfelt. Second of all, no, that's not the most common reason to be bitten by a shark. No, that does not play a significant role in shark attacks. I mean, for fuck's sakes, 94% of all shark attack victims are men. Now, granted, that's probably because 94% of the people doing dumb shit that gets the attention of sharks are men, but I think that's plenty of a reason to rule out period cuties as a leading cause. But here's the more pressing question. How much blood exactly does Laird think ends up in the water? Like, three wishes right now. I really want him to give me his estimate to the closest Gatorade container. And now that I have you involuntarily picturing a Gatorade container filled with menstrual blood, ick, I'll turn you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. Thank you, Lucinda. And in frown under news tonight, Australia doesn't have much to be proud of. Back to you, Noah. <laughs> Do your story, dude. Okay. Australia doesn't have much to be proud of. <laughs> Come see us at Skepticon in Sydney, everybody, please. <laughs> or don't. I don't care. Are you, are you just sabotaging our show now? You used to be subtle. Was I? Was he? Were you? Okay. But one of their great exports was female tennis players, specifically Margaret Court, number one on and off ranked female player throughout the 60s and 70s. However, Margaret, like all things we enjoyed during the 60s and 70s, turns out to totally suck. Yeah, let's see. Free love, psychedelic music, long hair. Yeah, checks out. Hey, whatever. Fucking quarter clockers were awesome. What's in this egg? Could be anything. 
Probably a plastic spider ring, but it could be something cool. Could be a slave. <laughs> <laughs> you picturing Calvin Candy playing Bakugan? Me too. No, me too. Spinjas. <laughs> Hogs. You see the shape of this slammer. No, as the battle for marriage equality in Australia rages, Marge has thrown her hat in the ring on the losing side. Apparently, yeah. she's hoping Australia will be the last holdout for edible food and gays making it legal. I, I, I hear the food there is lovely and that no one should spit in it. Eli, quit pissing off the fucking Australians. The, the shoes there are poisonous. I plan to spend the entire time wrapped in plastic and bullets. <laughs> Watch, Noah still gets harassed at airport security. You go right past. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. Right through this way, sir. Right through. Oh, 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 slow down there, sick of you. <laughs> Publishing an open letter to Qantas, Australia's only airline, fun fact, consisting of only one plane, Court expressed no. her dismay at their open support for gay rights, saying, quote, As you will know, I have represented Australia many times and have the proud record of never losing a tennis match while playing for my country. I bet I could kick the shit out of her now, though. Like, she's old, <laughs> right? <laughs> She's yeah. old. How bad do you get at tennis? Is it like golf or football? <laughs> uh, yes. You'll lose. It's like both. <laughs> it's it's like all the sports. You would also lose at golf and football to her. All right. Fair. She continues. <laughs> I am disappointed that Quintus has become an active promoter for same-sex marriage. I believe in marriage between a man and a woman. It's stated in the Bible. Your statement <laughs> leaves me no option but to use other airlines where possible for my extensive trailing. How proud I was to premiere the kangaroo tail throughout the world from the Constellation days to the 380s. But unfortunately, <laughs> no more. That whole sentence is nonsense. That is word for word. I know I did my right. accent no, no. there, but that is uh, Hold on, said. hold on. We got this. We got this. The Constellation days. She's a a space traveler uh, from the like from, from the late fourth century, right? And, that and, has and a, then uh, she. Nope, no nope. more. Don't got yeah. it. Now, obviously, court statements have caused as much outrage as it's possible for someone with white skin to do in Australia, and the blowback for court and support for Qantas has been very public. Which is why we would like to announce we'll be flying Qantas in solidarity when we arrive at Skepticon in November. Eli, 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 I actually found a uh, cheaper flight. Or whichever airline is cheaper. God save the queen or something. I don't <laughs> No, you saved it at the end. Now they Do they have a queen insulted. now? And in Statue of it's Limitations news tonight, we have the story of a disturbing protest about a statue removal that does not involve tiki torches. This one comes to us from Bangladesh, where a statue of Lady Justice was recently removed from that nation's Supreme Court building because Muslims found the statue offensive. Now, as offended as they typically are by both ladies and justice, their objection here was that having a statue outside of the Supreme Court building at all represented idol worship. Hmm. I feel like they didn't even wall the statue up inside her house to see if she could escape first. There are rules yeah, about exactly. this kind of thing. <laughs> you guys picturing Lady Justice uh, rimming her mom's butthole? Me too. Always. <laughs> Now, the statue, which is basically the Western ver version of Lady Justice, but in a pantsuit with coattails, was removed under the cover of darkness, like they do in backwards countries like Bangladesh and Louisiana. Uh, and the statue sculptor, Renal Haik, I, I don't fucking know. Anyway, uh, the statue sculptor called the removal an injustice. And after pausing to ensure that everyone did indeed see what he did there, he called the removal a, quote, slap in the face of the progressive people in this country, end quote. They should put it next to the Brave Girl statue on Wall Street. And then next to that, they could put a mansplainer statue telling Brave Girl not to stand up because look how bad the other statue has it. All right. All right. You done? On well, my birthday. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Spend a little time alone with your thoughts this week. How's that going? Sure did, Heath. Sure did. I can hear my heartbeat. I can <laughs> always hear it. As a you wash a couple of dishes right after you use right them? Right after I use them. Just make a dish, use a dish, <laughs> consider taking clean knife, putting it through eyeball <laughs> to end the vicious cycle. Because then there aren't any more dishes. And you don't think that the first time, but you think it the fourth time, Ethan. You think it the fourth time. <laughs> okay, but did anyone send you any thoughtful gifts, though? Pants I mean, rapist. <laughs> we'll talk about it. No. <laughs> 
You guys are having. That's the important thing, though, is that you guys are having. Sent you some fun. delightful penguin themed gifts. <laughs> no, penguin, no, thank you. <laughs> Hostile hostage notes. Some hostage. very nice from Amazon. Socks, some nice walking socks. Time was a gentleman walked up my stairs and handled mug. them to me sarcastically. <laughs> now, <laughs> if you'll recall, I was discussing a statue, and uh, apparently, Hake wasn't the only person who saw this as an affront to progressive people. He was. Joined in this critique by Bangladesh's progressive people. And as a concession, the statue was re-erected in a less prominent place. Bangladeshi authorities added, quote, Hey, we got to mention on scathing atheists without anybody being hacked to death with a machete. What more do you want from us? End <laughs> quote. I feel like we need to stop rewarding that behavior, right? Like, that's my feedback. <laughs> right? Isn't that what we... <laughs> and finally tonight, from the Jurassic Pork File, Amish Wolverine Ken Ham made headlines twice this week. Once for getting a doctoral degree in science, and once for having gay sex with a dinosaur. <laughs> okay. And I'm honestly not sure which is more ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> On the one hand, he's just like a, a dumb person. He's, he's stupid, and he couldn't possibly have earned an advanced degree in science. On the other hand, it seems like he'd go out of his way to fuck a lady dinosaur, even if he found the male ones more attractive. Yeah. So, Obviously, both of these things need a little more explanation. Um, <laughs> where do you guys want to start? Uh, oh, that's this. a tough question. Um, I, I care more about American higher education than dinosaurs, so I'm a little more concerned with how he managed to fuck that. Mm. <laughs> there. And I am eager to disprove all of science, and I hear this does the trick, so let's hear it. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, great pick. Did you guys make a pick? Whatever. We're going to go with what I was thinking. It's scripted, so, Heath. You saw what we wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> see, no, it's not. This is all Just three buddies off the cuff. Riffing. You don't, I didn't know what you were going to say. And great pick, the one you made. So Whoa. as you might have already guessed, the college degree he got was an honorary doctorate. Much like the ones David Barton puts on his wall behind a blur filter. <laughs> so it's not like Ken Ham actually did any learning. And uh, even if he had like gone to class, we're talking about Bryan College of Tennessee. <laughs> oh, well, fuck, fuck y'all. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's where faculty members all signed a statement that says all humanity is descended from Adam and Eve. Yeah. Every single faculty member. Also worth noting, the degree wasn't in any, like, particular field of science. It just says science. No. He has a doctorate in <laughs> science. Sociology. <laughs> they don't even know what the degrees are called. Nope. <laughs> well, so here's Dr. Beauregard. He got himself a BDV in antimony. And over here, <laughs> we got Dr. Haywood. He got himself a pH balance in biography. <laughs> Ken, can you name a science? <laughs> Toast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving on to the obvious gimmick story we're using to set up our 30 seconds on the clock thing. Ken Ham having gay sex with a Tyrannosaurus. All right. And it happened inside a recently published erotic novel about Ham's struggle to maintain his place as a leader in the Christian bigot community by suppressing his love of cock which apparently includes dinosaur cock. Very different thing, by the way. Thank you. No, yeah. no mm -hmm. clarification. So obviously, if you're into gay erotic fiction about people and great lizards, and who isn't, I highly recommend the book. It's called Ken Ham and a Seidel Man by Justin Beavers. And there needs to be more of this in the world. And that's why we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. Ideas for erotic fiction about people fucking animals on Noah's Ark. Go. All right. I know you've already done this one, but just for the future, it's no fair choosing something that Eli has bookmarked on Pornhub Pro. But OK. Um, <laughs> men in black stallions. Now they'll never go back. Uh, the snake charmer. <laughs> um, Don Quixote. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> Ass man of La Mancha. There we have <laughs> White lambs on black rams. Um, Oedipus T-Rex A farewell to arms <laughs> And I like that one. Tiny little dragon yeah, no, arms yeah, no, Where they exactly, would eat exactly. arms off you know, No you know pussies ahead. will be grabbed um, How about Oh I got a good one uh, Charlotte's Webcast 
Forget the lady that swallowed the spider. It's time for the lady spider that swallowed. I would absolutely watch that. <laughs> I had a at whole... The, at the end, she bites off Ken Ham's head and shits eggs down his corpse. You bet your ass you'd watch that. Ooh, <laughs> better now. Uh, dad on daughter, animal slaughter. It's a snuff film. <laughs> no, but it's... Uh, it ties With it spoilers. <laughs> uh, all right, how about Fifty Shades of Greyhound? <laughs> Two girls, one pup. We had to wind up there eventually, <laughs> didn't we? And now that the fat lady's gargled, I suppose we can close out the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. White delivery guys make me uncomfortable. And when what we Eli come back, is what Eli wrote. We'll try to in my spot. Wait, hold on. It's not racist. It's not. It's not because I like black delivery guys <laughs> or other races of delivery guys. Right. And I, the, before I have to answer that, we're going to take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to try to prove that we're cooler than people who can't buy gender and sing songs about how fun it is to wait for marriage. Eli writes things in the spot where I was going to say other things, just to be clear. I'm just saying it's weird. You're like, what are you writing for Vice? <laughs> this isn't an us job. <laughs> And then when you were like, I'll see your presence and add seven nights, I was like, whoa. <laughs> I know, but yours is still better. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's better. Hey, guys. Oh, hey. It's a new kid. Hey, Judaism. Hey, Christianity. Uh, hey, Islam. Hey, new kid. What you, what you doing? Um, Talking about how awesome our holidays are. Ooh, ooh. Bet yours are lame, though. So No, just... not at all. Why, all right. My holiest celebration is 30 days long. Well, it's, it's, it's sometimes 29, but it's, it's, about, it's about the moon. Uh, sometimes it's... Well, that actually sounds pretty cool. How do you celebrate it? Uh, uh, by not eating or, or drinking or smoking or taking drugs or having sex or... Masturbating. Dude, or, uh, you got to sit at a different table. Yeah, this one's not happening. No, but this is the Abrahamic table. I'm Abrahamic. Uh, yeah, so is Mormonism, but you don't see him hanging out with us. This is, again, it's not happening. Hey, guys, did you know that there are hundreds of passages from the Bible? Shut up, Mormonism. Nobody likes you. Yeah, Bryce, nobody likes you. I don't know why I keep saying yes when you ask me to be on the show. I don't even know why I do podcasts. Because you're stupid as your name? But I want to... You're not wanna... cool enough, Islam. Just go away. Aw. Yeah, go sit with Bryce. You see this, kids? This is why you don't want to be a Muslim. Because you like that dorky kid who everyone held down and pissed on for not having a cool enough traffic keeper. Or whatever it is kids have right now. Where the poor one isn't cool, so you pee on him. This message paid for by the committee to re-elect Donald Trump. And a pee on Bryce break a leg. <laughs> Every week, I get an email or two from people who found some online list of 10 questions atheists can't answer or something like that, along with a request to please rip it the new asshole it deserves. Now, to be honest, we tend to shy away from stuff like that because the questions are always the same bullshit apologetics that we've covered a half dozen times at least on the show, and it gets repetitive pretty quick. Plus, you got to wait for them to call in. It's a whole thing. I don't get it. But I, I learned this week that if the author of such a piece manages to frame it in a stupid enough a way, I apparently can't resist the bait. So I get several emails over the past week alerting me to a blog in the National Catholic Register by one Matthew Archbold, whose title promises to prove that atheism is, quote, the uncoolest choice ever. <laughs> End quote. Uncoolest? Uncoolest. Christianity's death and atheism's whack and that's the Yo. whole fucking article really? probably was sitting yep. backwards in a chair when he wrote it so who is <laughs> matthew Archbold around <laughs> and what makes him an authority on coolness well unfortunately this isn't a visual medium I, it, it would be worth switching to a visual medium just so the punchline of this joke could be a picture of this paragon of dorkery but i suppose we're gonna have to settle for painting a picture with words so heath eli how would you best describe the physical appearance of Matthew Archbold? <laughs> no, I'll put a picture in. Thing I did. Yeah, he, will, he, a <laughs> uh, he looks like Andy Wilson got poisoned by Eli's neck beard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks like bee allergy. Heath. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very attractive man is what we're saying. <laughs> I don't think that's what we were saying. All right. So as is the case with any good philosophical treatise, Archbold presents his argument in the form of 
a clickbaity eight point list, each point outlining another reason that atheism is uncool. And I figured, hey, who knows cool better than an overweight, balding Jew and the econ major that lives in my attic? So I uh, thought also poli sci and, <laughs> yeah, so. and you live in my basement, which is <laughs> on the main floor because I'm classy. I have with your basement. wife. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> who has a wife, right? So <laughs> I thought Dishes maybe. Are done. <laughs> I thought maybe, and perhaps I was being overconfident, but I thought maybe we could go through his points in an effort to regain atheism's street cred. So what do you guys think? I am incredibly hip. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you okay? I think I sprained my mouth. Sounds like you got hurt. Sounds like you got hurt. All right. Here we go. Uh, and before I quote any of this, I just want to warn everybody that this sloppy bastard writes in a style that can only be described as dad joke. So number eight, religious people live longer, happier lives. OK, one more time for the people in the back. This is not true. <laughs> Churchgoers live longer than non churchgoers, just like atheists who attend weekly groups live longer than atheists who don't, right? Like, because you stop going to church when you're too sick to get there. As to happiness, well, the elevator operators in Brave New World seem to love their fucking jobs, okay? <laughs> they did. Right. And even if this <laughs> were true, you live longer to go to church. Well, right, right. right. <laughs> if I have five less years, but a seventh of the mornings aren't spent in church, I feel like I'm coming out ahead. <laughs> right? Don't I come out whole extra ahead? years and no butt stuff? All right. Well, okay. Now you're making it confusing. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to point out: if this fat fuck makes it to fifty, I will eat the weight of his heart in leather. <laughs> Yeah, lecture us more, man whose face I think I could get several pounds of deli sliced out yeah, of. Right. <laughs> I feel like this guy could do that to himself with no slicer. Just like tuck his chin back, start chewing the other ones <laughs> that like fill in the area. <laughs> this elevator's taking forever. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your cheek? One of them. <laughs> And man, when Eli can talk shit about your actuarial projections, you know shit's gotten bad. <laughs> my doctor says my rectum and heart are the same size at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we all know the best way to Eli's heart is through his mouth or rectum. Either way. <laughs> either way. <laughs> all right, moving right along. Number seven, Michelangelo and Bach were cooler than Harry Potter. That's right. <laughs> what? What could be cooler then Renaissance paintings and Baroque fugues. Well, I mean, wizard cool. schools since you brought oh, it up, well, yeah, for answer. example. I'm just trying to think of a less cool person to name than Bach. Right? <laughs> Bach would have gotten beat up and shoved into a locker at Comic Con. Like, <laughs> I made this fugue, nerd, punch, wedgie. <laughs> like, you pick the criteria of cool, Matthew. Right, yeah, right, so right. I mean, if it's not similarity of your hairdo to an ass or the proliferance of memorable subjects for polyphonic contrapuntal compositions, like that, those are literally the only possible categories you could be judging by that Bach would win. Yeah, and he had to make up the second, all the words in that second one, the poly <laughs> Petrantic nope. Caliente. Nope. That, that joke was for Anna. Now, if Go only forward. there were some atheist musicians out there that were universally recognized as the arbiters of cool that could weigh in. <laughs> this guy might as well crawl out of the article, put on a backwards hat, start rapping during a dare assembly at a middle school. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Number six. And this one's pictorial, right? It says typical atheist gathering. And it shows five people with picket signs versus World Youth Day, and like a bunch of overdressed kids at a concert. <laughs> Is that Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock with one of the newsboys photoshopped in? That's clear. No. No. Why didn't you just use the black guy, though? <laughs> the, the what? <laughs> okay. I mean, he's got us here. He's got us. Seriously, guys, we need to start leaving copies of End of Faith at, like, Crunch or something. <laughs> All right. All right. No, I just feel like I got a couple of picks from Reason Con that could compete with 14 year old girls yelling. Uh, okay, again, though, I, th I think you're confusing everyone. <laughs> the, the point you're making is not clear. Why are they yelling? Are, I but, have followed. <laughs> yeah, I mean. All right, like, to be fair, 
Couldn't we also just submit a picture from any non-religious thing, though? Like, hey, here's a picture of the Giants game on Sunday morning. This is what a non-religious gathering looks like. I mean, really? Because I feel like Giants fans are doing a lot more praying than churchgoers. Um, Does that joke work? Are they good at their sport? Uh, soccer? Is that uh, their soccer nope. ones? Football. Ooh, Europe. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Oh. Okay, number five. Mets. They're bad. <laughs> Aren't the Mets go. bad? It was my example. You can't change it now. Anyway, number five. <laughs> atheists are mass murderers. And he's got us again. Yeah, okay. right. Okay, well, but look, if I ever resort to mass murder, Matthew Archibald needs to take at least a little bit of the blame for making me suffer through this fucking article. Or parking in your spot. <laughs> or that too. <laughs> too soon. From the piece, quote. He looks just like He does. Movie. He really does, though. <laughs> From the piece, quote, most of your big time mass killers of the 20th century were atheists. <laughs> Wait, I'm talking Stalin, Mao, and Che, among others. Oh, che? those are the ones you're talking about. Che? che? Hold on, they're the, close. Were they're there close. any other mass killers in the 20th uh, century? Just like a you, my head. And did any popes collude with them? Look, two of the 20 most murderous regimes of the 20th century were led by atheists, one of whom claimed himself as a man god, and the other one was pretty sure that was just a given. Right. Pretty sure we all agreed we were going to stack up all the bodies on either side of a scale, and whatever side was heavier had to admit <laughs> unrelated <laughs> claims were true. <laughs> or, or less cool. Is that less the cool? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Genocide isn't cool. I, I agree with that precept. <laughs> hey, who put all these rape kids on the stack? This doesn't matter <laughs> again. This is serious. We're doing science. I'm labeling you a rape manipulator. All right, we're halfway, <laughs> halfway through. You're number four, also pictorial. It says, This is an extreme Christian. And it shows a picture of Mother Teresa. Extreme. Versus. <laughs> This is an extreme atheist, and he's just an unflattering pick of Richard Dawkins. <laughs> right, like, what a terrible admission that there really is no better human being you could have picked for the extreme Christian picture. You've got a lady who tortured the poor like she was starring in Eli's elitist porn. Uh, by the way, it's a video mashup of Cops and Roots. It's very <laughs> Okay, it's just very. It's right. cops. It's, very it's cops. Then is what it is. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. Exactly. That's just called no, cops. But, <laughs> but also, the worst they could come up with for us was a former professor at Oxford who won a Royal Society of Literature award, <laughs> but was angry at the time that picture was taken. Okay, but when we're talking about extreme here, like who wouldn't want to watch a Triple X Three Return of Xander Cage remake starring Mother Teresa and <laughs> Richard Dawkins? Come on. <laughs> Or a season of Cops. Oh, only if it's, oh, sorry, only if it's post stroke. No, no what oh. happened was, oh boy, what would happen was, my, I don't have a bag. I'm going to reach very slowly, and then I try to drive away. Oh no! Oh, you got me. You got me, gentlemen. Number three. Too old for this sh shit. <laughs> Too old for this shit. All right, number, now that we know that Richie isn't coming on. Number three. <laughs> Christians. We already knew he wasn't coming. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Christians. Get all the pussy. Quote, as a Christian, my wife looks at me like I'm a gift from God. She sure doesn't, Maddie boy. <laughs> no, she she doesn't. sure doesn't. <laughs> yeah, she'd probably look at anybody who could get on top as a gift from God at this point. I'm sorry, wait, get on top? What now? <laughs> so <laughs> when they, you mean when they don't want to? That's bad, <laughs> Noah. We're not those atheists. <laughs> <laughs> he We're the good ones. Your atheist girlfriend... Should you ever get one after you move out of your stepdad's basement? Oh, shots fired, Heath. Shots fired. <laughs> Hold on, though. Joke's on him. It's a loft. <laughs> I'm not his stepdad. Anyway, he says, um, <laughs> when you find your girlfriend, she will see you as a gel-haired accident in skinny jeans. Oh, shots fired, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, there's more. On a lonely rock orbiting a meaningless sun in a mistake of a universe. Shots fired the thoughts in Eli's head. <laughs> <laughs> End quote. <laughs> look, my wife might look at me as a mistake, but I'm sure it's not the like meaningless circle around the sun. It's just like the, how much hotter she turned out than me. 
<laughs> they make those all the time. It's just I, turned out is a weird way to say that. I, I feel funny. like my wife is just happy. I'm not shaped like a plastic pantyhose container and I'm capable of a dig more clever than I bet your housing options are negatively affected by the decline in skilled labor jobs in rural America, you dork. <laughs> okay, so my wife has half the reasons of your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like phone calls. <laughs> I don't like phone calls. Number two, a lot of college professors are atheists, and what a bunch of dorks, am I right? Atheist professors. Now, like all the points he's made, this is too stupid to refute, but I find it interesting that he's, as he's making this point, he tips the who am I writing for hand with a couple of random digs here on diversity awareness and gender studies just out of nowhere. Hey, you know where this article should get published? I know where it could Uh, get published. Oh, oh, uh, DisneyCrowsAreCool.com. <laughs> oh, I'm on a YouTube. <laughs> All right. So after reading his attempts at humor and reasoning, I don't think that we needed any more validation that Matthew Archibald thinks knowing things and being smart is dumb. But it was nice for him to go ahead and confirm it in this Lester Holt interview of a penultimate point. Uh, that means second to last, Matthew, if you're listening. All right. You're about number to put one. down your pen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> number one. Atheists have less children, which probably means we're not fucking Smarter. as much. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. That's how the fuck. Okay, shmushmortion, butt stuff, gay stuff, contraceptives, gerbils, dude. If you think children are a gauge of how much fucking a person does, I'd love to hear you take a guess as to which parts of the body are involved. Uh, hand. Turkey baster. Uh, pass. I pass. Toast. Toast. <laughs> Toast. <laughs> also, this isn't true. Like, no. The, those are it's our just, things. We have yes. more sex and more money. That's our thing. Sex and money. Sometimes sex with money. <laughs> you said you would not tell. <laughs> it was not a judging. Patreon goal. How's he not going to tell? Make it rain. Also, if not fucking makes you uncool. What's the deal with that neck bearded loser on the cross, bro? Yeah, just forgive them, Father. It's about ethics in gaming journalism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. You were talking about Jesus. That's the guy. Yeah, yeah. All right. Look, Matty Lice, little piece of advice from an actual cool person. We've got the sex, the drugs, and the rock and roll. You got a youth pastor with a mullet, a $200 acoustic guitar, and an unshakable belief that hip is making a comeback. There may be valid arguments you can make for your religion, but this ain't one of them, buddy. When it comes to defending Christianity, coolness, like logic and reason, are always going to be losing arguments for you. Before we hit the checkout line tonight, I want to remind you that God Awful Movies has taken to the road for a series of live shows around the country. We're going to be in New York, Seattle, Austin, Salt Lake City, and Sydney, Australia this year. And if you'd like to join us, you can find dates and links to buy tickets on the show notes or at skatingatheist.com. Anyway, that's all the blast me we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. And a brand or newer episode of our sister show's Hot Friend's Hot Cousin from Out of Town, Citation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. And if even that's too long to wait, you're kind of fucked. We're doing all we can, guys. Seriously. Obviously, this would only be most of a show if I didn't thank Heath Enright for bringing only grade A dick jokes and for bothering to have them scored by the U.S. Dick Joke Rating Administration. He takes pride in his work. I need to thank the lovely Lucinda Illusions for earning the sin in the middle of her name the fun way. I want to thank the lovely in his own way Eli Bosnick for managing to feed and wash himself sufficiently to fulfill his duties this week despite his wife's absence. Anna, Eli cannot be trusted around Eli. Just keep that in mind when you're planning travel. I also need to thank Eric for this week's matrilineal multi-tagline crossover Farnsworth quote. But most of all, of course, I need to thank this week's best people. Adam, Sarah, Genevieve, Eric, Bryce, other Adam, Jesus, St. My Farrah, Jesse, James, Jody, Kyle, Juno, 3, Steve, Chase, Sherry, Chad, Jacob, Mark, Greg, Jeremy, Frank, and Les. Adam, Sarah, Genevieve, Eric, Bryce, other Adam, and Jesus, St. My Farrah, who are so badass, Tetris knows better than to make them wait for the long piece. Jesse, James, Jody, Kyle, Juno, 3, Steve, Che and Sherry, who are so bright you're not supposed to look at them through a telescope, and Chad, Jacob, Mark, Greg, Jeremy, Frank, and Les, who've been asked to split up their east and west-facing ejaculations so as not to fuck up the Earth's procession. 
Together, these 21 one-of-a-kind wonders won our affection one by one by wondering how one can one-up one's wondrousness and deciding it was by giving us money. Not everybody has the temerity, dexterity, and love for vulgarity it takes to give us money, but if you think you're up to the challenge, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free edition of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but you already gave it the office or something, you can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes or Stitcher, or if you've already done that, maybe leaving one for our newest production, Citation Needed. Could use some. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was also used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scanningatheist.com. All right, quick, somebody fuck something up so we have something for an outtake. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved.